Tom Giordano on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hey, welcome in, everyone. It is uh, Dom time. In honor of his visit today, we're asking for famous Toms, Tommies, or Thomases. Like, well, I won't say it. There's a famous Thomas, like the peeping Tom. Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch joins us here on Talk Radio 1210. Hey, Tom, welcome back to Philadelphia. Hey, thank you, Tom. Appreciate uh, having me on again. You're the first guest that we're doing the side question of the day on, which is one of our stocks and <laughs> trades due to your first name, Tom. Give me, give me your favorite, Tom. Is there a Tom that you think of? Oh, uh, well, you know, Thomas Aquinas. There you go. I, that's, a, that's a classy choice. And he knows how to pronounce it, too. Unlike you know, this guy. Yeah, my producer had trouble with the Aquinas <laughs> there, Tom. So, uh, yeah, Thomas Aquinas. Tommy, it's but, not say, a drink. It's, no. it's, a, it's a thing. <laughs> well, and St. Thomas More, I was always a fan of. But then I read more deeply, the utopian stuff is a large problem, you know, so kind of off that. But let's talk about what Judicial Watch is doing, one of our prime forces around these uh, mail-in ballots. What can you tell us is happening with that? What's the fear and what can be done? Well, I don't know what can be done at this point other than to encourage people to vote in person. I'm I'm. I'm as concerned about people's votes being thrown out because they've relied on the mails as I am about actual voter fraud that I think will increase in a dramatic fashion as a result of at least 43 million ballots being mailed to people without them asking for it. Wow. This is in addition to absentee ballot applications that are being mailed to people without them asking for it as well. Uh, I, I'm afraid, um, and, and I tweeted this out, that the, they set up the system to break, and uh, the election may not decide who's president. The House may. Well, we know how that would go then, without a doubt. Be a slam dunk, Tom. So, um, Well, I, what... don't, I don't know. We don't know that either, because uh, I think it depends on the delegation. Um, it votes by delegation. And... Um, Oh, wait a minute. Let's let's sure break that runs, down. Who uh, has the majority of delegations in the House? Or wait will. a minute, Tom. You are onto something that I'm in ignorance about. I think you made a great point. So you're saying it's by each state delegation. Yeah. I'm not sure who has the uh, lead there either. Republicans just might. Uh, Republicans, I believe, currently do, but I don't have the number off the top of my head and whether that will change or could change before. Yeah, as of July of 19, it was uh, 26 for Republicans to 23 for Democrats. Ah, right. Ah, so that is a, uh, a little factoid that we should be talking about more. So you're encouraging people to vote in person. The only danger with I am, too, I'm going to vote in person, Tom, but. You have people that say they're going to do that, Tom, and then at the last minute, they're scared by them. You can imagine what the media is going to be saying the week before the election about don't go out, don't do anything. So how do we walk that line, though? Well, Some people you know, know you deep go down. To, you, go to yeah. get, you go to get bread. Yeah. You can go to vote. Uh, you know, Dr. Fauci made that point the other day. And, yeah. you know, I don't agree with his public policy pronouncements <laughs> the way that others are tell us we're supposed to agree. Mm-hmm. But, um, you yeah, know, it's a common sense point. You can go get food. You can go vote. And, uh, you know, my view, vote by mail, uh, increases the opportunity for fraud on a good day. And in this election cycle, they've uh, uh, they're going to be sending at least 43 million ballots out. 43 million. And our mails can't uh, handle it. Our election systems can't handle it in terms of delivery. And then, of course, once you once you drop it into the mail, you know, there are all sorts of ways your vote can be thrown out. Uh, it can get damaged. It can get there late. There can be a signature issue if there's a signature requirement. Um, all sorts of opportunities for your vote to get lost between you placing it in the mailbox and it getting uh, to the uh, 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 and it actually being counted right. for real. Tom, so, tell uh, me, look, it, right, you know, that's you, the reality. Right. That's the reality of the U.S. mail system. It's reality of our election systems. And you see in New York, they um, uh, oh, that congressional they, race, they, yeah. they were completely overwhelmed. And I don't expect it to be much better in November. So how about this idea? I know there's a downside. I wanted to see what you think, though. We ought to push for opening up more polling places 
simply because then that would diminish the fear a bit and enhance in the mind of the person safety. Oh, so there's better uh, opportunities for social distancing? Yes. I don't, I don't object to localities making it easier to vote in person on election day. Yes. Uh, but, there's, you know, this goes back to the first issue, which is whether the coronavirus crisis, the epidemic, is a reason for people to be scared to vote. And in my view, one of the reasons it's continuing is because the left has an interest in scaring people from voting in person because they see their markets as voting mostly through the mail and they don't want people to vote in person because they think Republicans tend to vote in person. Well, and I so do Tom, to suppress the vote. Yeah, I, I agree, because I often say, hey, I'm looking at the weather pattern here in Philadelphia. Have it a nice rainstorm. I don't think it's mythology that their side is not going to come out and vote if they're inconvenienced, particularly younger voters will find a reason not to come out and vote in person. Well, you know, and, and what I'm frustrated about is that this isn't a Democrat or Republican fight. I know there are the, these cadres of leftists who have all these plans or whatever, and you know, where I, I speculate, I think quite fairly, but I don't want anyone's votes to be lost. If you're a Democrat, don't vote by mail vote in person if you're a republican don't vote by mail vote by vote in person it's the best way to ensure your vote's going to be counted yeah exactly and don't let right. the left scare you from voting don't let anyone scare you from voting in person you can't rely on the mails to do it you can't rely on our election um uh, officials to be able to count all the ballots in a way that ensures you're you're likely to be counted look in 2016 320,000 ballots or so were thrown out. Now, well, imagine what the number of, of, of absentee ballots, excuse me, absentee mail ballots. Right. Imagine what the numbers are going to be given the exponential increase in the number of mail ballots out there Millions. this year. Millions. Tom, want to turn to Sally Yates uh, yesterday. You guys are deeply involved in all this stuff. She pretty much, uh, I think, the two takeaways for me, her testimony, former deputy attorney general, one, Comey is a rogue, two, doesn't remember anything Joe Biden said about all this in the big meeting in question. What do you guys at Judicial Watch think? Oh, well, Stally Yates ought to be testifying before a grand jury is what I think. And... Um, I don't know why we expect her to come to the hearing and confess. <laughs> right. I'm not going to confess. And the question is, what does the documentary evidence show? What, are her, what do the notes show? The notes show what they show, that Biden did talk about the Logan Act. The notes, uh, even Susan Rice's own met, uh, cover um, CYA uh, memo that she wrote just before Trump came in, weeks after the meeting, show that uh, Obama was heavily involved in both the Flynn issue and, and both the dossier and the Flynn issue. And um, I, what I focus on is this, this canard that Sally Yates is putting out there, saying that she reviewed the, um, the fake FISA warrant applications and she signed off on them because she presumed they were accurate, you know, based on. Mm -hmm. but, look, anyone who reads the warrant applications would see they were obvious dishonest garbage to begin with. So the idea that you believed it is bunk. The applications are written dishonestly. They obviously raise more questions than they answer. And no serious lawyer, prosecutor, or public official would have signed off on them. And I'm not only saying that about Yates. I'm saying that about Rod Rosenstein. You look at these applications, and they come and they have this absurd uh, uh, conspiracy theory about the president. Trump campaign and the Russians, and they're using it to justify spying on an American citizen. Why alarm bells didn't go off tells you everything you need to know about the corruption of the Justice Department, because they didn't care about the rule of law. They wanted exactly. to spy on Trump, and they wanted to harass him. Exactly right. Where do we find all things Judicial Watch, uh, Tom Fitton? Uh, judicialwatch.org, judicialwatch.org, and of course we're on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else. Well, thanks for inspiring our side question of the day, too. I got you for Thomas Aquinas. Thank you, sir. Tom Giordano, weekdays 9 till noon on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT.